All right, Sagar, what are you looking at? Well, I spent a lot of time on this show talking about the 2020 Democratic election. I think rightfully so, in my view. But every once in a while, we need to turn an eye on our decrepit city here to highlight just how exactly we got to a point where polling indicates almost half the American public wants to burn our institutions to the ground. Yesterday was a prime example, something that our elites don't even try to hide. The House Ways and Means Committee threw a bipartisan birthday bash for insurance company AIG. It was widely attended by staffers across the aisle. Chairman of the committee, Richard Neal, who is a Democrat, gave remarks at the party. It included snacks and an open bar serving a, quote, centennial smash signature cocktail, all while an acapella group serenaded the group to the tune of Pharrell's Happy. This is Versailles 1790s level stuff. It is a repulsive illustration of the bipartisan corruption that has seeped into our system. Don't forget that this company, which received $190 billion in bailout funds, while the rest of the American middle class plummeted to destruction. It is the same company which paid out $165 million in bonuses to its ex executives after receiving bailout money and facing zero repercussions from the Obama administration. Money Monday, that same company, which was saved by the United States government, was thrown a birthday party in the halls of the United States Congress committee, which dispersed those funds. It literally doesn't get more corrupt than that. These people are so shameless that they bragged about this party. They allowed it to be reported in Politico. That's just business as usual in our capital city. Corporatism does not know any party. It has wormed its way into the highest levels of the United States government. It has ruled us to our detriment now for almost 40 years. The left has responded to this moment with democratic socialism. And the right looking at this moment is learning all of the wrong reasons. They're flying socialism sucks banners all across America without responding to the underlying structure of the American system as extraordinarily flawed. So many on the right lecture the millennial generation and the working class as lazy. They give no credence as to why exactly those people are angry. They watched the middle class get decimated and money get sent to Wall Street while student debt exploded and any surplus cash that happened to be laying around was trying to be spent turning the Middle East into a democratic paradise. America voted twice for change agent Barack Obama to try and clean up the system. He mostly just lectured corporations with an upturned chin and a wagging finger while letting them continue shipping jobs to China and to Mexico. Institutionalized corruption has yielded disastrous results. A new survey from the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation finds that more than 70% of millennials say they are likely to vote socialist, and one in five think that America would be better off if private property itself was abolished. This makes perfect sense to me. This generation sees the AIG bailout and the party 10 years later, they go, well, if that's capitalism, then this crap is not for me. I know some of the people watching this probably are actual socialists. I don't think most of you are, though. You're just fed up. You've been told that if you're against our current system that you're a socialist. So you shrug and go, sure, I guess. It is incumbent upon the right to restore an equitable and fair playing field within our system if we correctly, in my view, believe that capitalism is intrinsic to the strength of the United States. The libertarian streak of the Republican Party, it will be the electoral and the moral death of it. Libertarianism was founded upon the idea that the greatest threat to you in your life is institutionalized power in the form of the government. And it's time that they understood that the government isn't the only institution which can hold power in our society. It's time to rein in that power wherever it reigns. And Crystal, I mean, I just saw that AIG bash. And it's a I great just catch. I could not. Yeah, nobody else found it. And yeah. nobody else, I was like, in the halls of the committee, AIG, which almost crashed the American economy, literally insured legalized gambling. Look, whatever. I don't want to get into this whole glass steagle, whatever. All I'm saying is it's disgusting, yeah, right? Like I mean, that. That. I, I don't think you need to even know anything about finance or the bailout. You can be like, this company got 190 by 190 billion, and now it's getting a birthday patch in the halls of Congress. End it. When's the I mean, last time the American people got a birthday bash in the halls yeah, of Congress? I mean, that's right. really the that's really the other piece here is it's not just about the disgusting spectacle of fetting this massive institution that failed and had to be bailed out at the taxpayers' expense. Yeah. It's what that means for governing. Yeah. These are the people who have your lawmakers' mm -hmm. ears, and that's the problem. I mean, that's why you have Donald Trump. That's why, as we talk about all the time on the show, seventy percent of Americans say that they are furious with the political establishment, and 
that is what so much of the media fails to understand. I also see a direct line between this sort of like business as usual, nothing to see here, we're just giving AIG a birthday bash approach to the dismissing of the soft corruption of Hunter Biden because this it's, is just so exactly. common. So What's common. the problem? It this is just the way things are done. All of these staffers who went to that committee all want to go work at AIG That's after right. they leave That's Congress. Right. That's right. This, here's the thing. This is what I'm so deeply concerned about the right is that they are going to look at an Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders, whoever gets the nomination. They're going to fly socialism sucks banners all across this country. They got $154 million in the bank and they're going to lose. And the reason that they would lose is because if you look at somebody who's struggling and you tell them, well, you know, socialism is what happened in Venezuela and now people are eating dogs over there. Right. Well, <laughs> guess what? They're going to be like, well, you know what? I might as well gamble because right now <laughs> things aren't going out, going that well for me right, right now. Right. They need to learn the lesson that some of these things need to be reined in. They need to think that the only institution that is bigger and more powerful than some of these corporations and some of the system which is keeping people down is the government. That right. the government itself is the only tool which can rein some of which this can in. Balance the and I'm watching field. I am watching these libertarians and these chamber of commerce people take over the Republican Party and Trump again and he's gonna run on all of the wrong things and he's he can he could lose. Because Easily he could lose. Essentially where yeah. we are in America today, the libertarian approach of let's make government right. small means instead you're gonna be ruled by corporations. Yeah. I mean it's just trading one power for another. There has to be a balancing force there. And to your point, and this ties yeah. into you know what I was talking about in my radar with Bernie Sanders having the highest favorability rating, right? It's that flies that. squarely in the face. And you, no matter what poll you do, he always does well with independents and does way better actually with moderate and conservative voters than you would think because they love that he is willing to be anti-establishment, to throw bombs at the system yeah. here in Washington because they're just so disgusted with it. And that socialist label is not going to scare people off. They're just like, okay, he wants to give me yeah. health care. That's this not is, really that scary. That's, that's the issue. And I am terror. I don't want to live in a socialist country. I do not want to live in a communist country. I am deeply opposed to democratic socialism. And yet, I mean, I get why people want it. Like, of course I can understand why people want it. I don't think a lot of the people who even say that they want it understand the implications of what they're talking about here. And that is a detriment to the American right. Because if you are going to be the opposition, it's on you to not only define the terms, but to offer up some sort of counter solution. Right. And all they do is stick their flag in wherever they are right now, and they go, what are you talking about? GDP is 3.2% or whatever. Everybody's fine. Your uh, The stuff you buy at the grocery store is cheaper than it's ever been. Now shut up and go to your second job. Right. Right, yeah. and uh, if you're calling Obama a socialist, yeah. words no longer have any meaning. There, there you go. <laughs> All right, next on Rising. The impeachment inquiry is heating up. House Democrats have laid out the procedures for public-facing hearings, and tomorrow the House is expected to vote on the measure. Yesterday I talked to Senate Intelligence Committee Vice Chair Mark Warner. He says the sooner the better to hear the facts surrounding the impeachment inquiry. We also discussed whether he would break up Facebook. He gave a little bit of a surprising answer. That interview is next on Rising.